changing Your love is a mountain Burn beneath my feet Your love is a mystery How you gently lift me When I am surrounded Your love carries me Hallelujah 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 Your love makes me sing Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising. I can feel it rising. Oh, the joy that's glowing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines right through. I can feel this God song rising up in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Yes, you make me sing. Oh, how you make me sing, sing, sing. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing, and hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, your love makes me sing, hallelujah. beautiful people with your keys over there. Lisa's been looking for her keys for days, but she's got them this morning. Um, welcome to St. Andrew's United Methodist Church, where I wonder what we'll be concentrating on today. And you look around, and I know I keep hearing hearing you baba out in the... In the <laughs> yes, sheep! We'll be concentrating on sheep and how they are cared for by their shepherd. But before we get to that... Um, and begin our time of worship, I'd like to draw your attention to just a couple of things. Um, first, today at 5 o'clock um, in this room, um, um, anyone who wants to come, I'd, I'd like to meet with you and just talk for a little bit. Bring your own bag, supper, and drink. I am not feeding you. Okay, so bring your own bag, supper, and drink. But, so come with your supper and we'll just sit around tables. That means leave them up after this service. Okay, so, um, uh, and, and we're going to talk about the United Methodist Church, uh, where we are and how we got here and where we may be headed, and just so that we all have the same information. I think that's important for us. Um, so there's so much information out there, and I'm, and I'm hearing things that might need a little attention to kind of clear up and clean up a little bit. Um, so let's talk about that. My goal is threefold, to keep it to an hour. That's my number one goal, keep it to an hour, um, to offer us all the same information and to encourage us toward gentleness and love and peace. And that's it. That's it. So I look forward to seeing as many of you as can get here at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Next, I hope you already have it on your calendar that our church homecoming is this month. You got that on your calendar? Yeah, that's Sunday, September 25th. 25, um, and we will gather for one service at 11 o'clock. 
because we need this room to feed you later. That time we are feeding you. Okay, so, wow. It's a great day if you're a duck, right? Yeah. God's gift to us. We need this rain, don't we? That's a lot of it. Um, yeah, so one service at 11, we're going to sing and we're going to um, praise and pray and, and learn together as the Reverend Tim Russell. Oh my heavens, I'm so excited that Tim Russell is coming um, and he's going to bring his dynamic style of preaching as, as we um, you know, round out our time with a full meal and fellowship here in our Family Life Center. I cannot wait for September 25th. But for now, I say to you, may the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. I invite you to turn and share Christ's peace with one another. That means get up. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Well, they're kind of breaking outside. Yeah. You feel them out in the That's a good song. Um, amazing grace. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good. Thanks. I had the first one last year. That last song, Hallelujah. You guys should have been up here karaoke and lip syncing. I know it sounds so Okay, and as you return to your seats. <laughs> As you return to your seats, um, our praise team is going to lead us in worshiping our God through music. Let's sing together. Okay, and this is this is a new song for everyone. So we so we haven't done Let's this worship. song before. So uh, we'll do it today, and then next Sunday, and then the twenty fifth will be over at the other church. But. That's, that's that. Okay. Did you hear the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. We can see that God, you're moving a mighty river through the nations. And young and old will turn to Jesus. Fling wide your heavenly gates, prepare the way of the risen morn. Open up the doors and let the music play, let the streets resound with singing. Songs that breathe hope, songs that bring you joy, dancers who dance upon injustice. Did you feel the darkness tremble, when all the saints join in one song? All the streets flow as one river, wash away our brokenness. Hear that God you're moving, a time of jubilee is coming, when young and old return to Jesus. Fling wide your heavenly gates, prepare the way of the risen Lord. Open up the doors. Let the streets resound with singing Songs that bring your hope Songs that 
bring the joy Dancing to dance upon injustice Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ the risen one that's people we'll try we'll try that again next Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Name. 
You are amazing God All powerful, untamable Awestruck we fall on our knees And we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun its source to its light It conceals it to bring us the coolness of night All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable Awestruck we fall on these As we humbly proclaim you are amazing God Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful Untamable, awestruck, we fall on our knees and we humbly proclaim, You are amazing God. You are amazing God. Thank you all. caught me off guard by sitting in the exact same place you sat last week to <laughs> come and share our creation care moment for this morning <clears throat> oh. it is amazing grace God is amazing and these hymns this morning are just beautiful well I wanted to come and talk to you today a little bit about the earth and from Psalms 51 17 it says Lord open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise Listen to the voice of the nurturing earth. It is showing us that our food supply comes from the earth. Our soil and water needs to be healthy to fuel the global population. Small farms are suffering from the impact of climate change and the political power of corporate farms. Food prices continue to rise and food banks struggle to meet the demands. Americans, you and I, we waste 30 to 40 percent of our food produced. That's in the collection, the transportation, to the stores, in the stores, and in your homes. That's about 219 pounds per person per year. The USDA and the Environmental Protection Agency has a goal of reducing that by 50 percent in just seven more years. So you and I have work to do. This food loss could be wholesome food that could have helped feed families in need, but instead is sent to landfills. Food security and food waste are beginning to be addressed by our churches and also community groups across the globe. In Mark, the sixth chapter, 17th verse, give them some food yourself. And in Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter and 11th verse, the land will never lack for needy persons. That is why I command you, open your hand freely to your poor and to your needy kin in your land. Now, we here at St. Andrews, we don't donate food to the Garner Area Ministries. 
We are helping feed children at Fred A. Smith Elementary, and we give out a lot of Angela bags of food and water to homeless people. We as a church need to act by doubling our efforts to these two programs of the Garner Area Ministries and the Fred A. Smith Feeding Program. We need to encourage each other to shop locally. That means with uh, farmers markets, roadside stands, encouraging each other to seek out our own locally sourced food. And the challenge is, and I think Pastor will sort of remember this, in the spring, let's plant a tomato patch here at this church and share it with our members and with members in the community. So let's go to the Lord in prayer for just a moment. <clears throat> Lord, I often forget to praise you to acknowledge the gifts you give to humanity. The gifts that are others, those who are near and those who come from afar. The gifts that you put in the hearts of each and every one. The gift that is creation, our common homes. In Christ's name we pray this prayer. In his name, amen. Thank you. I want to remind you um, just very quickly that caring for God's creation is a unique and, and precious gift to us, and, and, and it's one that we can embrace through our mission and ministry of Christ Church. We've received much from God, um, and we've received grace and mercy and abundance and the love of Christ, the gift of creation, and even the gift of life itself. And in our worship, we, we praise God and we give thanks for these gifts, and we return to God from those gifts um, as our way of saying thank you. So your giving shows your generosity, and it shows um, your faithfulness in glorifying God, um, the Creator, and God, the Living Word, and, and God, the Breath of Life. Um, so in gratitude for God's generosity, um, let's share God's abundance um, with one another by, by leaving our gifts at the giving station in the back or, or um, this morning or by making sure that our tithes and offerings are received in the church office. So as we turn to a time of prayer, I know that you have prayer requests. Um, but I myself cannot approach this particular day without remembering our history and the heartbreak of 9-11. I remember how just two days after that, Queen Elizabeth broke protocol. She broke protocol. Nothing. This had never happened before, but she had our national anthem played outside of Buckingham Palace and a few other places around, around her country. And, and I mourn her loss this week. I remember how the freedom and the protection that we have, um, we often take for granted. And that's not available all around the world. It's especially inadequate in Ukraine today. So I remember that. You know, I continue to pray for those in Kentucky who are still dealing with great loss after recent floods. And, um, I can't even find the words to pray for the violence that floods our news reports, um, shooting sprees and um, stabbings and hit and runs and abductions. And I, I pray for those who are on our prayer list, as I know that you do, and I know that you have folks that you would like to name at this time. Thank you. Tracy? Roger. Thank you. Anyone else? Does anyone have a joy you'd like to share? We can start praying for Paul Festival. Yeah. Just a little heads up, Stacy, as we pray for Fall Festival and that successful endeavor, we have permission to invite all the 500 children at the school next door. So we'll be panning out flyers over there. <laughs>
just so you know. <laughs> Lots of volunteers for Fall Festival this year. <laughs> nice. So homecoming, Fall Festival, our new consecration Sunday in the whole month of October, blessing of the animals. Uh, we got so much awesome stuff coming up. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, kids' activities on Wednesday night, including a community choir. So we're going to invite those kids to that as well. You may just end up with, good for you. Take it, take it, run. All right, well, I now welcome you into a quiet posture of prayer. Um, you may want to plant your feet on the floor or place your open hands in your lap or close your eyes and take a deep breath and simply relax into the presence of God. So let's pray. O oh Lord, our shepherding God, come close to us now because we need you. We need you in our time of anxiety and economic uncertainty and global disease. We need you on this day when all of creation cries out for care. We need you through this age of illness and violence, this time of questioning our leaders this point in our lives when even your church sometimes seems upside down. We need you to bind our wounds and, and pour your healing ointment on our heads. We need the briars and the brambles and the burrs of this world to be pulled out, pulled out of our fleece and our skin. Shepherding God, you guide us with your voice. So help us to listen and follow no matter where your voice leads. Help us to trust you. Protect us from the hired hands that do not really care for us and have neglected or abused us in the past and help us to learn from our past rather than dwell on it. Continually create new days where our futures shine in your promises. Lord, today we thank you for your son who lay down his life for those who follow him and, and died even for those who are not in the fold yet. Lord, we pray for those who don't know you as the shepherd. Whose, whose life circumstances have kept them from knowing you as the Good Shepherd. We pray that by our actions, our behavior, and our teaching, we pray that our reaching out into our community, that these are the ways that others may come to know you. So loving God, remind us that we're here because you invite us. You seek us, you come to us, you embrace us. We're here because just like a shepherd seeks a lost sheep, you seek us when we're lost. And as a woman searches for a lost coin, you rejoice when we are found. Guide us, Lord, with your love. Unite us with your passion. And renew us with your peace as we raise our voices together in the way that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now from the Gospel of Luke, the 15th chapter, we hear Jesus tell this story. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner 
who repents. And from 1 Timothy, we hear the words of the Apostle Paul as he writes to his colleague Timothy, and he describes his former life and his thankfulness at the promises of Jesus. Paul writes, I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. For that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, Bill and I have, um, listen up, I got a lot to say and we're, we're running long. <laughs> You're going to listen fast, buckle in. <laughs> Bill and I have always encouraged our children to choose good friends. We've always encouraged all three of them to do that. Living, especially as the children of a pastor, you know, it's important that the entire family um, is, is um, seen by the community as children who make good choices, you know. Um, we, we need that. They're, they are, they have always been watched a little more closely, I think, than some others may have been. And, um, you know, most importantly, though, is the health and the safety and the well-being of our children. And, and as their parents, we are unwilling to compromise in those areas. We've always encouraged them to choose good friends. And that's why we do that. So imagine my frustration when one of our girls became the best of friends was someone whose integrity I questioned. Actually, I didn't just have a few doubts about this other girl. I found her to be outright dishonest, um, sneaky, and unreliable. Um, she was constantly in trouble, um, trying drugs, staying out all night, um, hiding very disturbing behavior from her parents. Um, she was on a seriously questionable path, in my opinion, and my daughter was her best friend. And I was incredibly uncomfortable with this relationship. Um, and, and although I felt and I really believed that my own child um, was trustworthy, and, and especially this one, it's that little red-headed one, right? um, she's pretty strong in her own character to not get wrapped up in all the bad behavior, but I just couldn't understand the draw. I, I didn't get that. Why would anyone want to be friends with someone who was so out of control? You know, someone who made such bad decisions, someone that I just didn't feel could be trusted. And so I talked with my daughter, and I expressed my concern, and my daughter blew me off. And I complained, and she ignored. And I explained the dangers, and she rolled her eyes. Anybody have daughters? Yeah, teenagers. Not one argument that I offered was met with enough seriousness um, to put a dent into their friendship. Now, my daughter, had she been four or five years old, I would have, you know, done more than discuss. I would have kept her from spending time with what I thought was such a bad influence. But my daughter was an older teenager, old enough to make her own decisions about her own friends. And Bill and I had worked really hard for many years to teach her well. And there comes a time when you have to let them fly and um, figure out things on their own. I still didn't feel comfortable um, with the time these two girls were spending together. But finally, one day, I brought it up again. Um, but this time I approached it differently. And this time I asked why. Why do you like spending time with her? You know that she lies. You, you know that she does drugs. You know she's inappropriate with boys. You know she steals. You know she treats her parents horribly. Why? Why be friends with her? And my daughter didn't even hesitate when she said to me, Mom, Mom, if I don't hang out with her, then she has no positive influence in her life. I think I'm supposed to do this for her. Don't you just hate it when your children are wiser than you are? In that moment, my daughter was a much better Jesus follower than I had ever dreamed of being. I was more like the Pharisee who looked at all the people that Jesus was hanging out with and, 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 and sneering. 
You know, look at all the bad choices Jesus is making. Uh, those people are not the kind of people that we church people make friends with. You just hear that Pharisee saying that. You know, you know he, Jesus spending time with tax collectors and prostitutes. Look at all that low life around him and all their questionable paths. The, the negative, the harmful, the hostile, the sick, the poor, for goodness sake. And he's not just talking to them. He's touching them. He's eating with them. He welcomes them and teaches them. It's like they have value. And all the Pharisees thought just as badly of Jesus as possible. Their opinion of him was so low that they could not keep their mouths closed about him. And Jesus, even surrounded by all of this hostility that, that he knew would eventually cause his death, even then, Jesus, Jesus doesn't back down. He, I am, he says. I am the positive influence in their lives. I am making the difference. He's, he says he's looking, actively looking for the lost. Where better to find them than in people? You know, where else would he be? Isn't this what he's supposed to be doing? Um, and which one of you, he says, if you lost a sheep, wouldn't go out and look for it until you find it? And that's where Jesus hits home for them in the telling of this story. See, shepherds and sheep were something that were really familiar to these folks, to this crowd who's listening to Jesus talk. And he's not talking about the hired hand, the sheep workers. Um, you know, he's over in another story, he talks about the worker of that works with the sheep and how he runs away when the wolf comes. But here, Jesus is talking about the owner of the sheep, the one who knows everything about them and has a, has a vested interest in their well-being, the one who loves and cares for each one of them. Now, you may know... I don't know what you know about sheep, but you may know that sheep really aren't the brightest of creatures. Um, yeah, sheep are dumb. If one gets lost, it's not coming back. It's not going to come back. It's not, it's not like a dog that can figure out how to get home. Um, a sheep can't find its own water or its own food. You know, a, a fight or flight means nothing to a sheep. Um, sheep have no real understanding of fight. And no real physical ability to, to kind of outrun a predator. A sheep is just going to wander around lost. Um, kind of wander around aimlessly throughout its life and make a pretty easy target for anything that wants to harm it. So a shepherd who has invested his heart in his sheep won't be able to think of anything else until every single one of them is safe. Even if 99 of them, can you believe I own this many sheep? Even if 99 of them are safe and in the fold and are just fine. He will be so obsessed with finding the one that's not there. I wish we'd had the children's message. It was going to be so much fun as they hunted for this sheep that's not over there. Um, it, it, you know, it's it, obsessed about caring for this lost one. The, the shepherd's going to leave everything behind to go and look for that one. You know, he'll go wherever he has to go and do whatever he needs to do to save that one animal. He's willing to go places that he would never go under any other circumstances, into, into thick woods or over dangerous and rocky terrain or out into the desert. He's not going to rest until he finds the one that is lost no matter what it takes. So do you see where Jesus is going with this? Jesus is not talking about some hired hand preacher or some church worker here. He's talking about God. The one who knows everything about us and has a vested interest in our well-being. Our Lord and Master, who is the one who loves and cares for each one of us. If we get lost, we can't figure out how to get home by ourselves. We can't do that. We are just going to wander around aimlessly. Without the bread of life or the cleansing waters of forgiveness, we're going to make a pretty easy target for evil um, that wants to harm us. Jesus, who, who has invested his heart in every single one of us, won't be able to think of anything else until every single one of us is safe. Even if 99 of us are just fine and in a right relationship with God the Father, Jesus is going to be so obsessed with caring for that lost one that he's going to leave everything behind to look for that one. He'll go wherever he has to go and do whatever he needs to do. He's willing to go into places that he may never go under other circumstances. He's going to go into the thick woods of suffering. He's going to go over rocky and dangerous terrain of crucifixion. He's going to go out into the desert of death itself. He's willing to follow our paths to find us and, and bring us back into right relationship with Father God. 
the right relationship that was meant for us in the first place. He's not going to rest until he finds that one who's lost no matter what. You know, being lost in a world with sin and fault was not a difficult concept in the first century, and that's the world that Paul grew up in. And We'll probably talk about Paul on another day. I was going to today, but I think I'm going to leave you with Jesus right now. Understanding that you have value. Even when we stray, we have value. Every single one here is valued by Father God. And, and spending all of our energy and our efforts looking at our past mistakes, Lord knows I've made them. Oh, we'll talk sometime, not today. Um, I always have to come back to say the past informs me, but it doesn't define me. My past does not define me. It informs who I am. It informs me well enough to move forward and pursue that right relationship with God, but it does, does, it does not define who I am. How I've been treated in the past, the bad decisions I've made in the past, those don't define me. Because I have value in the sight of God, as do you. I'm going to invite you to pray with me now. Holy God, these are your beautiful people. And if a shepherd will s just search and search for one lost sheep out of a hundred through all that wretched terrain or in horrible danger, Lord, if that's, if that's able to happen, then we know without a doubt that you, Savior of the world, you will search for one lost follower, and you'll do that with even more determination. So, Lord, blessed be you as our good shepherd who loves us. Amen. So will the servers and the singers um, come as we approach the table of our Lord? Lift up your hearts and let's give thanks to God as we pray. Blessed are you, O God, who created all things and called them good. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to live among us and to suffer and die for us. We know that those actions were followed by his rising to live again and, and destroying death and sin's power forever. So thank you for pouring, pouring out your Holy Spirit on us and making us new. Thank you that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread and cup he prepared them, he broke the bread, he lifted the cup. He gave them to his disciples and he said, Remember me when you eat and drink in this way, because this is my body and my blood, which is given for you. Thank you. Help us to remember. We do remember. And we praise you by offering ourselves completely to you. Come and live in us and in these gifts. May your spirit be felt within us as we eat and drink today. Renew us as your body for the world, freed by your blood. And help us look forward to your coming victory when we feast alongside of you at your heavenly table. All glory is always yours. Amen. Well, the table is set, and you are invited to the feast. You, you may come from your seat for a piece of the common loaf to dip into the common cup, or you may ask us to come to you where you sit. Um, and then we have the basket that um, has already so graciously been um, spread among you with the individually sealed portions. So as the music plays, please follow your heart and come. The first morning, 
Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing, praise from the world. Sweet the rain's from heaven like the first to fall on the first crown praise for the sweetness of the wet garden spring in completeness where his feet by the great shepherd and in his name seek out that which is lost so go in peace and joy amen the time has come for us to leave this place Guide us and protect us, and lead us in thy grave. Wherever life may take us, as we go a separate way, help us share with others the things we share today. May the peace of God the Father and the love of Christ the Son. Guide us in the days ahead, strengthen us each one. May the blessings of the Spirit fill us from within. God bless us and return.